In the workshop, making a condenser oil trap with a boiler feed water preheater coil, part 1. This is also known as an economizer, and the principle is, the heat from the exhaust steam that passes through the condenser is used to heat the boiler feed water on its way to the boiler. This is done by using a simple heat exchanger. Quite a few viewers have been asking me, how does this work? And the simplest way to show this is for me to make a condenser with a heat exchanger coil inside it. And here's the coil. So the components are a piece of copper tubing, two end caps and a coil of copper pipe. And the first job is to square off the ends of the copper pipe. I could do this in the lathe, but it's quicker and there's less chance of a disaster doing it on the belt sander. If I put this part in the chuck it will overhang considerably and it may foul up when I start cutting it. I suppose I could make a wooden plug for the end, centre drill this and use a live centre, but all this is going to take a long time. Squaring off the end of the copper tube this way takes far less time. To make sure that the ends of the copper tube are square to the barrel, I just use a set square. It couldn't be simpler. A quick health and safety notice. This can be dangerous because what's likely to happen is the belt sander will grab the piece of copper pipe and fling it off the end. To illustrate this point, in the first part of this process I didn't hold the copper tube very securely, so it started to bounce about on the belt, and once that oscillation starts it's going to be very difficult to hold on to the part. The best thing to do is to stop the belt sander and re-evaluate your life. What I really meant to say there was just get a grip. Don't be frightened. Hold the copper tube firmly and securely onto the belt and this will eliminate the vibration and chattering but don't forget the part will get hot so maybe gloves are advisable. I just prefer to burn my fingers. Once a piece of copper tube is perfectly square at both ends it's time now to bend the coil. And for this job I'm using a piece of steel bar that I found in my box of steel bar bits. You could use a piece of tube but whichever method you use, the piece that you're winding around needs to be 3 eighths of an inch less than the piece of copper tube you're using for the barrel. The copper pipe is 3 sixteenths of an inch in diameter. In imperial measurement, 3 sixteenths is half of 3 eighths. This coil of copper tubing fits inside the condenser barrel, and I want the finished coil to be approximately the diameter of the inside of the barrel itself. I don't want to use too much copper tubing because the more copper tubing inside the condenser, the less space there is for the water, therefore it will need to be emptied more frequently. Which leads me to my next point. I'm making this condenser oil trap economizer because quite a lot of viewers were asking me about it as I mentioned earlier on in the video. I must say at this stage though, this principle doesn't work if it's a very small condenser oil trap. You need a good surface area for the steam to heat the tubing, which in turn will heat the water. So as far as model condenser oil traps go, this is quite a big one. In this clip you can see me making small adjustments to the coil as I fit it inside the barrel of the condenser. It's quite a tight fit and I want it to be, I don't want it rattling about in there. I also need to space the coils so they're not touching each other once they're in place inside the tube. And in this clip I'm persuading the coil to go into the tube using a scrap piece of mahogany. I bought these two castings from Blackgate's Engineering. I used some like this a while back when I made a condenser oil trap for my Stuart Victoria steam plant. And these are actually castings for the water preheater of a model Clayton steam wagon. I just need to modify them slightly for my application. I don't want the part of the casting that sticks out of the side, and rather than machine them off, I'm cutting them off on the bandsaw. And after removing these parts on the bandsaw, it's over to the lathe for a bit of machining. I try and do the majority of my work these days in the small Boxford lathe and here I'm fitting the casting into the chuck. And as you've just seen I always give it a bit of a tap with my very soft nylon faced hammer just to make sure that the casting is seated properly in the chuck. Wherever possible when making these videos I will use the Boxford lathe for the machining operations because it's more like the size of lathe that most viewers may have in their home workshops. I must admit though, sometimes it is easier to use a smart and brown lathe, which is a good bit bigger than this one, for machining castings like this. But provided the casting will physically fit in the lathe and you can get the tool into the right position, there's nothing wrong with using a small lathe for manufacturing model steam engine parts. What I'm doing at the moment is turning down the centre boss. Really, in retrospect, I didn't need to do this, but I thought, no, it'll look nice turned down, to make it slightly different to the one that I made for the Victoria. And once I turn down the centre boss, 
I machined the other two areas of the casting that you can't currently see because they're moving too fast. I used a centre drill to drill a hole right in the middle of the part. And then as usual, using a twist drill that is two imperial sizes less than three eighths of an inch in diameter, which is what I want, I drill the hole all the way through the centre. And then I engage back gear. This is the back gear lever and I have to screw the little screw in because it has a micro switch and it won't work unless I do that and it's really annoying. But as I'm tapping this thread in the lathe under power, I need the part to run slower. This next bit is wrong, hence the red cross that's just wiped between the two parts. I reversed the casting in the chuck to turn the other side and the outer diameter. But because gunmetal is a very soft metal, it isn't a good idea to clamp this in the chuck by the freshly turned centre boss. What I did instead was I screwed in a fitting like this. And then I held the hexagon part of the fitting in the chuck, and this was a very good support for the part. And with the live centre bringing up the rear, the part was very sturdily supported, and I could easily machine the outer diameter at quite a fast speed without any chatter. After machining the outside to the correct diameter, I started to machine the front face. Although I suppose as the part is currently reversed in the chuck, this is the rear face. I need to turn down this face to form a register that fits inside the piece of copper tube. These end caps don't have to fit very tightly into the copper tube. I do like to leave some room for the solder to penetrate, but I thought I would try and get it somewhere near. It's still a bit big, I'll take a little bit more off I think. One fine final cut will do it, and it does indeed. It's a good fit, not too tight and not too slack. At this point I really felt like saying I once had a girlfriend like that, but I think I'll leave that part of it out. Anyway, I've made two of these, as you can see, one and two. So here you see a kit of parts for a model condenser oil trap that is also going to double up as a boiler water feed preheater, also known as an economizer. That's it for now though, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.